السلام عليكم One other aspect in voice analysis The harmonics to noise ratio The HNR In this presentation We shall discuss What is harmonics to noise ratio And how does a listener perceive noise in the voice signal The sources of the noise in the voice And how the HNR is estimated either in the time domain or the frequency domain and then we'll touch briefly on other ways of quantifying noise in a voice signal including normalized noise ratio the spectral peak prominence the spectral tilt measures autocorrelation and finally the difference between a glottal noise and the spectral noise assessment the energy and the normal voice signal is primarily composed of regular harmonics but there is also another component of inharmonic energy in it even in normal voices so long as the harmonic part of the uh, voice energy vastly exceeds the noise part up to seven times the noise part the voice can be perceived as normal this uh, ratio may drop a little bit in the elderly so the harmonics will be about five times the noise and in the children where it is between two or three times the amount of noise in the signal the hnr the harmonics to noise ratio is the ratio of the energy and the harmonic component of the voice in a special uh, frequency range compared to the inharmonic component in the voice signal if uh, the uh, ratio between harmonics and uh, uh, noise drops significantly the voice can be perceived either as rough or it can be perceived as breathy if a fundamental frequency of a certain voice is say 100 hertz then all waves with frequencies that are positive integer multiples of this fundamental frequency like 200 hertz 300 400 or 500 would be termed harmonics collectively they will be termed higher harmonics all other frequencies that are not and integral multiples of the fundamental frequency of the 100 hertz will be collectively considered as noise the harmonics are all periodic at the fundamental frequency the harmonics are formed due to the regular vibrations of the vocal folds during phonation but what are the sources of the noise in the voice signal the main sources are either air escape through the larynx or irregular vibrations of the vocal folds incomplete adduction of the vocal folds during phonation would lead to air escape a breathy voice and significant noise in the voice signal this may also, may also happen with increase in the infraglottic airflow or irregular mucosal waveforms vibrations during uh, abduction or abnormalities in the larynx in the form of uh, focal lesions or muscle imbalance if uh, a raised subglottic air pressure is causing a pressed or a strained voice there will also be significant noise in the voice and voices a voice signal with a lower pitch are often associated with an increase in noise we shall go through some of the very elaborate ways of splitting a certain voice signal energy into its harmonic part and the noise part of that voice signal the ratio between the harmonics and the noise part would reflect the efficiency of the larynx in converting the airflow into a voice signal so long as the amount of energy in the harmonic part is seven times or more the amount of energy in the noise the voice would be perceived as normal if this ratio drops 
then the voice would be perceived as dysphonic, rough, or breathy. The higher HNR are associated with higher sound pressure level, higher fundamental frequency, and also a shorter sample duration of the voice signal. This concept of comparing the amount of energy in a certain signal to the amount of noise in that signal is used widely in various other fields in science and engineering to compare the desired signal to the background noise and is often expressed in decibels. If the amount of energy in the harmonics are the part of the signal that are periodic, this would, can be estimated and would form the numerator of the equation. The amount of energy in the noise part is irregular and random fluctuations in the energy level that over a certain period of time would actually uh, average to about zero. So the amount of noise, the, pre the energy in the noise, would be the standard deviation of these irregular and random fluctuations because the average of them is actually zero. And this is the equation used to uh, drive the signal to noise ratio and HNR is a special form of this equation. How can the HNR be estimated? How can we split the amount of energy in a certain voice signal into two parts, uh, the regular harmonic part of the energy and the irregular noise part? There are two approaches for this. One is the estimation in the time domain and the other is in the frequency domain. In the time domain, the amount of energy in a signal is expressed across a time frame. You can see the regularity of the waves in here and this would constitute the harmonic part of the signal and you can see the minor fluctuations in the signal which would be considered the noise. In the frequency domain the energy would be expressed across frequency, certain frequency range and the signal would have to be uh, transformed uh, in order to uh, ex extract the amount of harmonic energy and the noise energy in that signal. The method to obtain a high quality voice signal sample for further analysis and computations is through using a condenser microphone and on a digital tape in a sound uh, treated booth or a quiet room. The subject is asked to sustain the vowel A ah for a long segment more than three seconds and do it three times at a comfortable fundamental frequency and intensity level. And one of these three uh, samples would be chosen for further analysis. Out of this three second sample, only a part of 200 milliseconds stable segment would be required after uh, visually inspecting the signal itself. The signal would then be filtered and digitized and uh, used for further computations. This is how the HNR is estimated in the time domain with um, a trace like this, a sample of the voice signal. Uh, the trace would have the y-axis showing the energy level in that signal, the amplitude, and the x-axis would be time in milliseconds. And as you can see, the amount of energy in the signal varies with time, and the average of these variations would be uh, computed and would be plotted as the solid black line in here. And this is the harmonic part of the signal. You could see fine oscillations up and above that solid black line, and this represents the uh, standard deviation of the variance the, in the uh, signal 
itself with time and this would be taken as representing the amount of noise and will be shown in the lower trace and the ratio between the average amount of energy and the signal and the standard deviation of the uh, oscillations are across the mean with time would be uh, used for calculation of the HNR. You could also see a sudden increase in the amount of noise in the, samp in the voice sample and this would reflect what is happening in this area in here in which the fundamental frequency uh, across time changes very rapidly uh, the succeeding um, cycles would have different fundamental frequencies with higher jitter and this would show why the noise has increased so the uh, estimation of H and are in the time domain is quite sensitive to irreg other irregularities in the periodicity of the signal like the jitter or the shimmer. This influence of the fundamental frequency perturbation on the calculations of the uh, noise component and the HNR can be minimized using certain mathematical equations uh, employed for time normalization with certain techniques. One of them is the zero phase transformation. And by using this, the uh, amount of the effect of the perturbation of the fundamental frequency can be reduced or minimized, as you can see here, rather than having the sharp increase in the noise and uh, the reduction in the HNR ratio. But the uh, estimation of the HNR in the frequency domain takes a different approach. It uses some uh, mathematical procedures uh, called spectral methods used basically to capture the degree of harmonicity in a certain signal. A strong component of that signal would correspond to the regularity of the harmonic peaks. Uh, this is a frequency domain type of uh, energy and a voice signal with, with the amplitude in the y-axis and the frequency in the x-axis. And with the spectral uh, procedures, you could see this sharp increase in the amplitude, which is quite regular and this would represent the harmonic part of the voice signal. After certain other mathematical uh, procedures, including inverse Fourier transformation and uh, filters used uh, or collectively called spectral lift ring, that is going to remove the effect of these harmonics, you'll be left with the uh, noise component which is marked here with the solid black line. Now this uh, solid black line, the noise can be average to produce the uh, average noise in that part of the voice signal and the harmonics part are the anything above that level or the amount of energy in these peaks. Next, we'll touch briefly on other ways of quantifying the relation between the harmonic and the noise part in a voice signal, starting with the normalized noise energy, the NNE. You could see in these traces a normal voice signal trace where there are well-developed harmonic part of the signal up to a high frequency of around 3500 or so, followed by a small segment here of irregularity reflecting the noise part, dominated by noise in the higher frequency. Compare this regularity up to 3.5 khz with um, traces from either recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy where there is considerable air escape and noise in the voice signal or a T3 glottic cancer. 
you could see that the harmonic regularity would soon fade um, much earlier at around 1000 hertz or so uh, followed by the noise segment after this the normalized noise energy the nne reflects the relative level of the noise in the voice signal compared to the harmonic and bases the estimates on a small number of vocal periods as opposed to uh, individual cycles as in HNR. The normal threshold for the NNE would be a minus 11. On this scale, you could see this uh, trace here is for a normal voice signal at about minus 11 decibels. Um, compare this to other traces from early glottic carcinoma, for example, where the mean threshold is lesser negative. It's even uh, less negative with the advanced glottic carcinoma in T4s. And with papillomata, of laryngeal papillomata as well, you could see a similar trace for laryngeal uh, focal fold polyp or for laryngitis. The lesser the negative value, the worse the voice is. The NNE uh, is usually perceived as a high NNE is usually perceived as breathiness, and it can correctly identify that all patients who have advanced glottic carcinoma are abnormal and about one fourth of the patient who have uh, early glottic carcinoma are, can also be identified as abnormal with this technique. The technique is the spectral tilt measures, which compares the level of energy in the high versus the low frequencies. In a normal harmonic spectrum, the amount of energy expressed in decibels would progressively fall with the increase in the frequency. Uh, as you can see here in the traces from normal subjects. But if is abnormal voice signals like breathy voices, say after recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, there will still be a considerable amount of energy in the higher frequencies compared to the normal decline, the normal tilt in the harmonic spectrum. And this can be quantified. It is uh, noted that this higher energy in the uh, higher frequencies would actually start to gradually drop after successful treatment, say, after a thyroplasty for recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Another technique is the spectral peak prominence, in which a voice signal in the frequency domain would be transformed by spectral mathematical procedures to provide prominent peaks in the harmonic of the voice signal. The peakness of this harmonics of these in the trees would reflect how sinusoidal the power spectrum of a voice signal is. Compare this prominent peak for a normal subject with the less prominence of peaks in the spectral transformed signal of a breathy voice, for example. Another way of estimating the periodicity of a voice signal and how sinusoidal or harmonic it is, is the autocorrelation, in which a part of the voice signal is correlated with a delayed copy of the same signal. If they correlate very well, as is expected in a normal subject, the correlation coefficient would be quite marked. Compare this with correlation between a, a part of the voice signal autocorrelation with a delayed part in a breathy voice. The correlation coefficient will drop due to the aperiodicity in contrast to the normal uh, peaks in the normal subjects. 
And finally, the HNR of the primary glottal signal, the glottal HNR, is different from the speech HNR, the SHNR. And although we are more interested in the noise component in the glottal signal that may reflect uh, problems in the larynx, it is actually the speech HNR is the one that is used in practice. The glottal HNR is, has a higher value, that is to say a more harmonics to noise than the speech HNR and it's also a bit more stable. It does not change much with the changing of the vowel uh, uh, used for the analysis where you can see the changes in the HNR of the speech signal with different vowels. Uh, the cause for this would be with vowels with high frequencies like the A uh and the I, you would have a higher HNR than vowels with low frequencies like the U, for example. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the harmonics to noise ratio. Salam alaikum.